The Thar Desert. Temperatures surpassing 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 Celsius. Average annual rainfall as low as 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Dust storms with winds over 90 miles an hour or 150 kilometers per hour and miles upon miles of infertile soil blown into sand dunes. Doesn't exactly sound like paradise, and indeed, a good portion of the desert has been declared unlivable, including Badler, an area about 43 miles 70 kilometers northwest of Palodi in India. But just because humans can't live there, does that mean there isn't a way for us to utilize the land? Well, since 2016, the Badler Solar Park has proven that inhospitable terrain like the Thar Desert in India actually does have an important resource. Solar radiation. The largest of its kind in the world, Badler covers 14,000 acres or more than 56 square kilometers, making it roughly the same size as Manhattan. So, what does it take to build a city sized solar power plant in such an unforgiving place? And was it worth it? With a current population of 1.38 billion, India is set to overtake China to become the largest country in the world by population as early as 2023. Supporting all those people requires a lot of electricity. Despite some 20% of Indians not having access to electricity, the nation still consumes some 3,790 gigawatt hours of power per day, more than the entire country of Nicaragua consumes in a year. Nevertheless, India is not a major producer of fossil fuels, ranking 20th in the world in terms of oil production. As a result, the nation has been looking to alternative energy solutions to power its growing population, and with some of the consistently sunniest weather in the world, they thought, well, why not start with that? Of course, Building the world's largest solar park was far from an overnight project. Specifically, it's gone through four phases of investment and development centered around the auctioning of the capacity to various energy companies around the globe. Badler started out rather small, with 420 megawatts capacity, just 19% of its current 2,245 megawatt capacity. NTPC Limited, an electricity generation firm owned in majority by the government of India, divided this into six packages of 70 megawatts, which were then auctioned off to national and foreign energy companies. Fortum, the company owned in majority by the Finnish government, quoted the lowest bid of 4.34 rupees per kilowatt hour for one of the packages, at the time one of the lowest India, and indeed the whole world, had ever seen. For reference, this equates to about 5.4 cents in US dollars. Compare that to the current price for electricity in Germany, the most expensive in the world, well, they pay 39 cents per kilowatt hour. Rising Sun Energy and Yarrow Infrastructure, private firms from India, as well as Soler Direct, a private firm from France, on the remaining packages with bids just a few rupee cents higher. Butler's success attracted much more interest in the second phase, with 27 different companies bidding for 250 added megawatts of capacity developed by the Solar Energy Corporation of India, another Indian government-owned energy company dedicated entirely to solar power. Commissioned in August 2017, Phase 2 added another 87.5 megawatts, divided between auction winners Charisma Energy, Rising Sun Energy, and Sunseep Group. It covers 346 acres and cost around $55 million to build. Phase 3 was much more extensive and added 1,000 megawatts sold at two auctions of 500 megawatts each. By this point, prices had dropped even lower. Auction winners included Hero Futures Energy, the famous Japanese SoftBank group, and Acme Solar, who bid just 2.44 rupees or 3.1 cents per kilowatt hour for 200 megawatts, currently the cheapest electricity tariff in India and indeed one of the cheapest in the world. The rest of the park's 2,245 megawatts were deployed in Phase 4, becoming the world's largest solar park in December 2018. Winners of this phase included Fallon Energy Group, a South African company, as well as Avada Power, Airtel, Foxconn, and SoftPan Group again.
For a project of its size, the development of the Battler Solar Park has actually gone relatively smoothly. That said, it hasn't always been easy. For one thing, construction has been limited by road access. The nearest urban center is Falodi, almost 50 miles away, and access is by the narrow Falodi Jamala Road, along which the journey takes about an hour and a half. More significantly, the park has received resistance from residents in Falodi and the surrounding villages. Since the park's 10 million solar panels take up so much space, they've inhibited much of the herding in the area where animals like cows and goats must range for long distances to find enough vegetation to survive in the desert climate. As a result, the park has made it more difficult for many in the area to support themselves. The Indian government originally promoted Badler as a source of employment that would replace the local farmers' livelihoods, but up until now that just hasn't been the case. This is in part because a large amount of the park is simply automated. You see, another obstacle for the park has been the Thar Desert's frequent sandstorms, which block out the solar panels and leave dust on them that lowers their capacity. Consequently, they have to be cleaned. But instead of employing people, the many firms involved in the project have opted to use robots. For example, Solar Direct spent roughly $100 million to purchase automated cleaning service from Copia, a company that specializes in robotic solar panel cleaning. While this has meant many locals have ended up without the jobs they were hoping for, it has worked surprisingly well and kept Battle operating at a record-breaking capacity. All right, but what does the world's largest solar park really mean? Well, for one thing, Badloo was actually pretty cost-effective. The total investment in the mega projects estimated to be around $1.3 billion. To compare that, Hoover Dam has a slightly lower power generation capacity at 2,080 megawatts, but cost almost three times as much to build at $3.6 billion in today's dollars. Plus, it's cheap and efficient when stacked up against other energy sources. For instance, the average price for coal-powered electricity in India is 3.2 zero rupees or four cents per kilowatt hour almost 33 percent more expensive than the solar power from badla in fact badla is part of the reason india has the cheapest solar power in the entire world while large solar parks in the u.s usually cost around one dollar fifty cents per watt to develop mega projects like badla are nearly half the cost at just around 79 cents per watt. As a result, India is getting pretty serious about solar power, scrapping previous plans for coal-fired power plants that are now more expensive. By 2032, the government wants 40% of its electricity to come from renewable sources. The majority of that will be solar-derived from Badla and the more than 30 similar parks around the country. Perhaps a more ambitious goal, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced in 2015 that by the end of 2022, the government wants solar power capacity to reach 100 gigawatts. At the time, the entire world only had a solar power capacity of 177 gigawatts and India just 2.5, but Badla was right on the horizon. The rapid development of solar parks like Badla have made India's solar power program the third fastest growing in the world after only China and the US. In 2021 alone, they added over 10 gigawatts for a total of 57 gigawatts, or 6.6% of their total electricity capacity. True, still not 100 gigawatts, and India has a long way to go to reach its goal, but with over 2% of it met by Badler alone, they're definitely on their way. The only question is, will Badler keep its crown for long, or in their quest for inexpensive renewable energy, will India build an even bigger park someday to soak up the sun?